Welcome back, Guardians. In today's Destiny 2 lore episode, I wanted to talk about Finch. The community is split. Some Guardians like Finch and others do not, but most would agree Finch is a sussy boy. I did not trust Finch until I read the new lore that is unlocked by collecting the Light Moths in the Throne World. This lore provides an interesting perspective on what happens to a ghost when they revive a Guardian, or even more specifically, when they revive a Hive Guardian. In my opinion, it helps to explain why certain ghosts continue to revive guardians who are up to no good, whether that be a Dark Age Warlord or the Lucent Hive. At the end of the video, I'm going to briefly mention an unusual situation, where a ghost seems to be more evil than its hive counterpart, almost suggesting that some ghosts are just bad apples. But before starting, this video is sponsored by Raycon's Everyday Earbuds, quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. Most of you already know, but I have a baby on the way, and these are about to be my new best friend. I'm sure they're going to be many late nights, but at least I can keep listening to my favorite shows or streamers without disturbing the whole house. More importantly, the dad bod is already kicking in, and I'm far from my MMA days. You can even listen to your favorite lore YouTuber while you work out and they're going to be super useful for my dad bod prevention exercise program. Raycon Everyday Earbuds look great, sound great, and most importantly are super comfy. The gel tips are optimized for the perfect in-ear fit so they don't come out. Trust me, not even the most rage-inducing PvP moments will shake your earbuds free. With 8 hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life, it is no wonder that Raycon's Everyday Earbuds have over 48,000 5-star reviews. Click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com forward slash mylan to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. And with that, let's begin this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. Let's begin with why Finch seems so suspicious. Of course, we instantly don't trust Finch because he has already revived a Hive Knight. Not the best start to our relationship. But my primary reason for not trusting Finch was how he discovered information about the temples in the Witch Queen campaign. As a quick reminder, in the Witch Queen campaign, we recover objects from temples dedicated to Ziva Arath, Oryx, and Sathona. The objects contained memories, important memories of Savathun. Using information from Finch, we recovered these memories and essentially gave them back to Savathun, as Savathun had lost her memories after being revived as a guardian. These memories contained important information that Savathun needed, such as a warning about the Witness, and how to harness the power of the Witness through the Tablet of Ruin. Finch does not provide any explanation to how he discovers the location of these temples. In general, the in-game dialogue has Finch as very vague and eager to please the Guardian, almost like he's trying too hard to convince us he's an ally. Have a listen to the mission Ghosts, where Finch leads us to Zevu Arath's temple, which contains Sagira's ghost shell and Savathun's memory. So, Finch, mind telling us what exactly it is we're looking for? Oh, you know, uh, what's his name? That old warlock Osiris? Yeah, it's his ghost. Well, was his ghost. Wait, you mean Sagira? Th that's the one, yeah. You know what happened to her. How she... Mm. Zivo you know. Arath came for her, backed her into a corner. But clearly Savathun found her shell, impersonated Osiris. Ah, I see. That must have been part of her play, to steal the light, I mean. Sure seems that way. Well, I'm, I'm sensing some skepticism. We don't know you, but you're very eager to trust us. Makes me uneasy. Hey, 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 now, I, I am taking a huge chance trusting you too, you know. I bet you change your tune once you find Sagira. If we find her, then we can talk trust. Of course, the rebuttal to this is that Finch also leads us to Sathona's temple, where we discover the White Worm. The memories of the White Worm are recovered by Akora, revealing the Hive were lied to by the Witness. This becomes our main strategy to defeat Savathun in the campaign. If Finch was secretly still sided with the Hive and Savathun, why would he tell us about the temple? Then again, Savathun did not know about the memory inside the White Worm, and we were almost killed by an Ahamkara illusion. 
Right, so as I mentioned, the new lore book, Lucent Tales, provides greater insight into the Guardian revival process, and in my opinion, redeems Finch. But before talking about the lore from Lucent Tales, I want to discuss the group of unpartnered ghosts that Finch was a part of before he revived his Hive Knight. This group of ghosts were unpartnered and questioned the process of resurrection. Firstly, they questioned whether ghosts had a choice in who they revived, and secondly, they questioned how independent a ghost can act from their guardian. And lastly, they also read the Books of Sorrow, essentially a history of the Hive from Oryx's perspective, and in general were sympathetic towards the Hive. Have a listen to these passages from the Witch Queen Collector's Edition lore book. These ghosts without guardians argue about two things. One is the exact nature of their connection to their undiscovered guardian. Is each ghost predestined to find one and exactly one soul to raise as a guardian? Or does each ghost have a taste, a set of preferences that many dead people might satisfy? Could a ghost potentially raise anyone? Does the choice of a partner lie within the ghost or is it a mission assigned by the traveler? They also argue over how one should interact with their chosen guardian. Should ghosts accede to whatever their partner demands? Or is a ghost relationship with a guardian a negotiated bond between equals and co-dependents? Heavy stuff. But I guess it's the same argument people always have about their relationships. Is there such a thing as true love or just the love we decide we're going to make work? And have a listen to this entry about the Books of Sorrow. I noticed one common thread among these unpaired ghosts. They really like the Books of Sorrow. Ever since Eris deciphered the calcified fragments, Guardians have been fascinated by the history of the Hive. But these ghosts, I don't think it's fascination, I think it's pity. They see the Hive as an exploited underclass, for goodness sake. Victims of a cosmic parasite that tricked the poor Krill into eternal slavery. No wonder they haven't found their Guardians, they don't want to help anyone kill Hive. Now let's move on to how the lore book seems to redeem Finch. The lore entry Finch 1 provides multiple reasons to why Finch revived a hive in the first place. The first is, they thought it was the Traveler's will as the throne world was being molded by the light. Secondly, there is a hint that Finch was corrupted when he first met his potential guardian, like just being in close proximity to the hive knight corrupted him. When I read the entry, have a listen for the section where it says something good in Finch died. Thirdly, Finch felt peer pressured to revive a Hive Knight. He actually says this in the game, but also describes it in the lore entry too, where all of his friends were reviving the Hive. With all that in mind, have a listen to the lore entry, and I'm going to read the entire entry because it's really good. You gotta understand, none of us came here thinking grand schemes. None of us. There was, there was just this urge, you know, so we followed it only to step into a world remaking itself. The light just thrashing away at the darkness, pounding away, mountains sloshing into seas like sugar in the rain, a hive throne world remade on a whim. I'm not what you'd call a believer, not after the Red War, not after the Tangled Shore, not after a lifetime of never mattering, just cause I wasn't half of someone else's whole. But that, that made me feel again. And then I saw him, what was left of him, lying there, just this corpse, dead maybe, oh a hundred years, it's my night, I look and I know he's mine, like hearing a song for the first time and it's already stuck in your head, and in that moment I think something, something good in me died, and 22 and Kemasi and Marcel, they're all raising their partners, hive light bearers, every last one, you think it'd be impossible, but sure enough, all standing there. Ely, Quasit, Hatcher, everyone's finding their purpose. There's Hive to the left of me, Hive to the right. I'm buried in them. And the whole time, every ghost I ever knew is shouting, telling me, this is the Traveler's plan. Who are you to question it? And I thought maybe they're right. I mean, I could see the light scouring a whole world right in front of me. Maybe this was some kind of turning point for the Hive, knowing your creator chose you to remake an entire species. Oh, you'd make bad choices too. So I shared my light, who wouldn't, 
a couple hundred of your closest friends bearing down on you and a hive shredder waiting if you say no. I shared, I reached into him, touched something deep. And what he offered back, it wasn't light or dark, it was cold, it was wrong, and I knew it would fill up whatever empty cracks in me the light left behind. And I chose to make it a part of me, to be half of his whole. I chose to share my soul with a monster. And the thing is, you can't just be part monster. As you can see, the lore entry provides detailed information about why Finch revived his hive night. Specifically, there are a number of outside pressures, pressure from his other ghost friends saying that it was the Traveler's plan, and also threats if he did not do it. You likely also notice a very interesting aspect of bonding with the hive. Finch talks about sharing his soul and realizing that the hive is truly a monster. It is almost like their two souls are fighting for dominance. It is very possible this explains how certain ghosts continue to revive their guardians, whether it be warlords or lucent hive. It may be that the soul of the guardian corrupts the morales of the ghost. Finch talks about how you can't just be part monster. The next law entry, Finch 2, seems to reinforce this theme, that the guardian's soul can corrupt its ghost. Finch talks about this internal battle with his newly resurrected hive guardian. Finch also speaks about how his Hive Knight convinces him to revive him. Somehow his Hive Guardian is communicating with Finch even while dead, whispering to Finch to revive him. While Finch gives in at least once, he eventually resists the urge to revive his Hive Guardian. But I do wonder whether Finch is the exception. I wonder if other ghosts cannot resist their Hive counterparts. Have a listen to the lore entry, Finch 2. Once again, I'll read it in its entirety as it's very good. Oh no, no, no. Why of all things did you make me do this? The hive certainly weren't perfect. Actually, let's not mince words. That was straight up evil. But you, I gave you a part of me. I let you make me worse just so I can make you better. You were supposed to understand. You were the only one who ever could. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, so really, you know, this is your fault, not mine. I know. I know you don't want to be dead. I know that. You think I don't know that? I watched you shoot a guardian and her ghost, dead, all because I could hear you in the back of my mind needing me to bring you back. And I listened. I listened to the others, then to you, to everyone except myself. I didn't expect miracles, but I expected something. Yes, you're dead now, and I can hear you, but I can't. Don't you get it? I just can't. I'm not gonna be the trigger man anymore. I'm not gonna sacrifice humanity on your personal altar. You're not, you're not worth it. You're not worthy. And you never were, were you? Why does Sabathun have the light? I should have asked why a long time ago. None of us did at the time, but I should have. We both know this wasn't right. Look, I've got no faith left in the traveler, but I know it. It wouldn't give me a monster and say, make him a god. No, no, we both know this wasn't right. Was it pity? Optimism? Maybe. Maybe it's just the obvious. I mean, Hive don't accept gifts. They take. Maybe the Traveler was tricked. The end of some long con. The Traveler isn't just some dumb orb ripe for grifting. Gaul found out the hard way. There's got to be more to it. I have to dig deeper. And if joining you damned me, well, hell, sounds like a good place to start. I'll find out how she did it and I don't care how much you try to change my mind. You're staying dead, you hear me? You made me a monster, remember? You don't get to cry about it when I act like one. In general, this provides a great mechanism to explain why ghosts continue to revive guardians who try to destroy humanity. The ghosts have been corrupted by their guardians. However, there are some interesting examples in the lore with Witch Queen, where it appears to be the other way around. And what I mean is, there are two examples of Hive that seem more morally intact than their ghost. I'm going to make a more detailed video on this later, but let me give you a brief version. The first comes from the lore entry Eloch. In this entry, a Hive ghost is trying to convince their Hive Guardian to crush a ghost of a human Guardian. The Hive Guardian hesitates. Why does the Hive hesitate to destroy a human ghost? We don't hear the Hive Guardian's perspective 
but it is very interesting. Have a listen to the law entry Elok. Crush the ghost. Why do you linger? Luzaku. What is there to learn with your eyes that you will not learn with your fist? Do you not wish to be something real? Something that lasts forever? Why do you look to me? Children are curious. Humans are curious. But Hive is strong. Your understanding comes in vanquishing the thing. So do it. No, it's free. This is what your speculating has wrought, Luzaku. You have failed. And now the tides of the universe will erode you into meaningless dust. All that you could have become has slipped through your fumbling fingers. The Guardian will return, flush and hungry from his death. And then? Then you'll be dead. I ant. As you can see, it is the ghost that is encouraging the Hive Guardian to crush another ghost from a human guardian. Finally, there is another entry in the law book, Lucent Tales, that describes a ghost that keeps trying to revive a Hive Guardian. However, the Hive Guardian does not want to be revived and keeps killing itself. So the question is, is this ghost straight up evil or were they corrupted before this which led to their behavior? I mean, if you listen to the Drifter, the Drifter will tell you to never trust the ghost. And with that, that concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can leave the word Finch or Sassy Baka if you still don't trust Finch. As usual, it has been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.